Hello friends, welcome to our channel Create Your Wealth. Let's continue our series on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. In this video, we will look at the key highlights of chapter 2, which is based on the lesson number 1 that we learned in the previous chapter. The rich don't work for money. Okay, so here it goes. Dad, can you tell me how to get rich? My dad put down the evening paper. Why do you want to get rich, son? Because today Jimmy's mom drove up in their new Cadillac and they were going to their beach house for the weekend. He took three of his friends, but Mike and I were not invited. They told us we weren't invited because we were poor kids. They did? My dad asked in incredulously. Yes, they did, I replied. My dad silently shook his head, pushed his glasses up the bridge of his nose and went back to the reading paper. I stood waiting for an answer. The year was 1956. I was nine years old. By some twist of fate, I attended the same public school where the rich people sent their kids. We were primarily a sugar plantation town. The managers of the plantation and other affluent people of the town such as doctors, business owners and bankers sent their kids to this school, grades 1 to 6. After grade 6, their children were generally sent off to private schools. Because my family lived on one side of the street, I went to this school. Had I lived on the other side of the street, I would have gone to a different school with kids from families more like mine. After grade 6, these kids and I would go on to public, intermediate and high school. There was no private school for them or for me. My dad finally put down the paper. I could tell he was thinking. Well son, he began slowly. If you want to be rich, you have to learn to make money. How do I, ma how do I make money? I asked. Well, you use your head son, he said, smiling which really meant that's all I'm going to tell you or I don't know the answer so don't embarrass me. So a partnership is formed. The next morning I told my best friend Mike what my dad had said. As best I could tell Mike and I were the only poor kids in the school. Mike was like me in, in that he was in this school by a twist of fate. Someone had drawn a jog in the line for the school district and we wound up in the school with rich kids. We weren't really poor, but we felt as if we were because all the other boys had new baseball gloves, new bicycles, new everything. Mom and dad provided us with the basic like food, shelter, clothes, but that was about it. My dad used to say, if you want something, work for it. We wanted things, but there was not much work available for nine-year-old boys. So what do we do to make money? Mike asked. I don't know, I said. But do you want to be my partner? He agreed. And so on that Saturday morning, Mike became my first business partner. We spent all morning coming up with ideas on how to make money. Occasionally, we talked about all the cool guys at the Jimmy's beach house having fun. It hurt a little, but that was good for it inspired us to keep thinking of a way to make money finally that afternoon a bolt of lightning came through our heads it was an idea mike had gotten from a science book he had read excitedly we shook hands and the partnership now had a business for the next several weeks mike and i ran around neighborhood knocking on doors and asking for neighbors if they would save their toothpaste tubes for us. With puzzled looks, most adults consented with a smile. Some asked us what we were doing, to which we replied, we can't tell you, it's a business secret. My mom grew distressed as the weeks wore on. We had selected a site next to her washing machine as the place we would stockpile our raw materials. In a brown cupboard box that one time had cat soup bottles, our little pile of used toothpaste tubes began to grow. Finally, my mom put her foot down. The sight of her neighbor's messy crumpled used toothpaste tubes had gotten to her. 
What are you boys up to? She asked. And I don't want to hear again that it's a business secret. Do something with this mess or I'm going to throw it out. Mike and I pleaded and begged, explaining that we would soon have enough and then we would begin production. We informed her that we were waiting on a couple of neighbors to finish using up their toothpaste so we could have their tubes. Mom granted us a one week extension. The date to part begin production was moved up. The pressure was on. My first partnership was already being threatened with an eviction notice from our warehouse space by my own mom. It became Mike's job to tell neighbors to quickly use up their toothpaste, saying their dentist wanted them to brush more often anyway. I began to put together the production line. One day my dad drove up with a friend to see two nine-year-old boys in their driveway with a production line operating at full speed. There was a fine white powder everywhere on a long table with on a long table were small milk cartons from school and our family's hibachi grill was glowing with red hot coals at maximum heat. Dad walked up cautiously having to park the car at the base of the driveway. Since the production line blocked the carport as he and his friend got closer they saw a steel pot sitting on top of the coals with the two toothpaste tubes being melted down. In those days, toothpaste did not come in plastic tubes. The tubes were made of lead. So once the paint was burned off, the tubes were dropped in the metal in the small steel pot, melted until they became liquid. With my mom's pot holders, we were pouring the lead through a small hole in the top of the milk cartons. The milk cartons were filled with plaster of Paris. The white powder everywhere was a plaster before we mixed it with water. In my haste, I had knocked the bag over and the entire area looked like it had been hit by a snowstorm. The milk cartons were the outer containers of plaster of Paris molds. My friend and my dad and his friend watched us as we carefully poured the molten lead through a small hole in the top of a plaster of Paris cube. Careful, my dad said. I nodded without looking up. Finally, once the pouring was through, I put the steel pot down and smiled at my dad. What are you boys doing? He asked with a cautious smile. We were doing what you told me to do. We are going to be rich, I said. Yep, said Mike grinning and nodding his head we are partners and what is in those plaster molds dad asked watch i said this should be a good batch with a small hammer i tapped at the seal that divided the cube and in half cautiously i pulled up the top half of the pl plaster mold and lead nickel fell out oh my god my dad said you are casting nickels out of the lead that's right, Mike said. We are doing as you told us to do. We are making money. My dad's friend turned and burst into laughter. My dad smiled and shook his hand. Along with a fire and a box of spent toothpaste tubes in front of him were two little boys covered with white dust and smiling from ear to ear. He asked us to put everything down and sit with him on the front step of our house with with a smile, he gently explained what the word counterfeiting meant. Our dreams were dashed. You mean this is illegal? Asked Mike in a quivering voice. Let them go, my dad's friend said. They might be developing a natural talent. My dad glared at him. Yes, it's illegal, my dad said gently. But you boys have shown great creativity and original thought. Keep going, I am really proud of you. Disappointed, Mike and I sat in silence for about 20 minutes before we began cleaning our mess. The business was over on opening day. Sweeping the powder up, I looked at Mike and said, I guess Jimmy and his friends were right. We are poor. My dad was just leaving and as I said, boys, you are only poor 
if you give up the most important thing is that you did something most people only talk and dream of getting rich you have done something i am very proud of the of the two of you i will say it again keep going do not quit mike and i stood there in silence there were nice words but we still did not know what to do so friends this is where i will end the part 1 of the chapter 2 it's a long chapter and i don't want to put the entire chapter in one episode because some of you may not listen to it so stay tuned for the part 2 of the chapter 2 and uh, if you've liked this video then hit on the like button and do subscribe to our channel thank you